All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on back. Continuing along our Monday, now, of course, turning over to our afternoon, shortly after 2.30 p.m. Eastern time here live in the Cyber Group trading room, and, of course, streaming across Facebook and YouTube here, here for our afternoon meeting. Let's get a quick sound check just to begin. Make sure everyone can hear me loud and clear. All right. Well, I'll tell you guys, I just talked to myself in the stream on across YouTube and Facebook for the first 30 seconds. I just realized looking at the chat board here in the trading room, I was muted. All right. So how about this? I, I think I'm good to go across social media for all of us here in the trading room. Give me a quick chat back. Make sure you guys can hear me loud and clear. Perfect. Aye, aye. It's been a long day, kind of a slow day aside from the morning and hopefully a better afternoon. The markets are pushing back up here, ready to break a new high as it just has. Uh, Dow is up over 300 points heading into this afternoon. Great to see everybody though. Jerry, Gene, Bonnie, David, Kathleen, Ken, figure, figure you were talking to yourself, he writes. Tim, Cliff, Amy, John, Mark, H as well. Great to see you all. And of course, like I'd said, for all of us here streaming across social media, you know, guys, let's hop right into it because keep in mind, we have phase three class later on this afternoon. So Fausto's phase three stock course, where you'll where you'll have the chance to see Fausto himself trade the live market close. We're going to post that link in our dashboard. We'll post it across everywhere else in just a moment. Uh, for anyone looking to learn more about Cyber Trading University, our trading room here or our online classroom, I'm referring to anyone across social media, just feel free to give a call to the uh, number that's on the banner right below. But otherwise, again, for all of our students here currently enrolled, we will look to post the link for the phase three stock course here in just a moment. Uh, with that said, I always like to start by showing the Dow, Dow Industrial. Like I said, markets pushing up nicely, but I'd like to really go right into the uh after, afternoon watch list. You know, normally I tend to recap a couple of stocks that made some big moves, which we'll still look to do. But really, I'd like to go right from the top, go from right from the top of the gainers list, right all the way through. So number one right now, actually, is a stock that we have not traded at least so far today. I didn't see it called out in the trading room, SSI. Looks like a lot of its run has happened just across the last, you know, 45 minutes to one hour. So, you know, pretty cheap stock. Uh, you could see on the daily chart, one thing that really piques my interest is just the crazy run up that we had on this stock back in the uh, mid to end of 2019. This is a familiar name. I remember trading SSI at the time. And well, I also remember it's been a while. Well, why exactly has it been a while? Because what goes up came right back down. In fact, with the huge gap down and continued drop after. So, I think this might be the first time since the end of the last year that we've been following this or looked at it. But given the range that this stock made from two to nine and above, and then all the way back down here, I simply just like the fact that this is trading near the highs going into the end of the day. So, you know, for right now, I'll put the SSI stock just on our list. We'll find stocks you know, above a buck, I, I, I would normally say, stocks that are making just as steady of a, a trend up or anything looking a little bit more active in terms of volume traded. Uh, Naked NAKD, one from earlier this morning. Let me also reset my pre-market charting. I always lose that when I go to the Dow. Um, yeah, Naked had the big pop early in pre-market. Got halted a couple of times shortly after the market opened up, but has been kind of a, a dud since. Now, this Y10 trade we called out over and over throughout the morning. Uh, this was one that was up er, up big pretty early on. And, you know, shortly after the open, it ended up pulling back from 750 down to like six ish. And then over time, it's, it built its way back up. And as you could see, the end result it was a huge payout. So, you know, this broke above resistance 750 at the time, huge resistance just from the chart and also likely from the order book. You could see big volume spike as soon as this broke through that 750 price level. So, it ran up pretty nicely up at the time towards nine. And, well, es essentially, what became resistance essentially became support. It crashed through 750 very briefly, but, you know, it goes to show how well of a support that really was just based on the end result afterwards. Continued up, pushing all the way up towards eventual high of the day, 1015. So this Y10 trade has been a real star so far this afternoon and from, from this morning. Uh, for right now, I feel like a stock like this has already made such a big move across the day, up 72% already, you know, breaking out shortly after the market opened up and running all the way through. So I'm not going to put this on our main list just yet, but has been a very active stock so far. So, uh, you know, is it possible for this to make a 20 or 30 cent little popper drop? Absolutely. By all means, that would be like kind of a weaker move compared to what this has been doing so far. So, you know, for, for right now, Y10 will at least keep on the side. 
I was joking around earlier in the chat board, at least saying that I guess people are uh, eating their vitamins today because we have GNC running up pretty nicely. Uh, in fact, GNC is a gap fill. And in fact, I don't know if it filled the gap already. It looks like it came close. 95 cents was the low back in mid-March. High of the day today, 90 cents. Uh, is it possible for this to fill higher than the gap? It definitely is. Again, we already have a cheapy and SSI, and that has a bigger range just across the last, you know, four or five months just on the daily chart. So I feel like that could be a more explosive move heading into the close. All right. Uh, oh, GNC jumped up over Y10. I was wondering, like, did I lose my spot? <laughs> uh, another cheapy. VISL, this one's breaking out as we speak, so it's just pretty hard for me to not put this stock on our main watch list at this point, right? I just said the same about the uh, GNC trade, but this one seems to be pushing up a little bit quicker, a little bit better compared to that GNC trade. So, you know, if we're kind of comparing apples and oranges here, so to say, I'd rather follow the uh, VISL as of now, which leads me to AYTU. And I say it that way because, you know, of course, AYT is a stock from this morning. We had it on our pre-market watch list. It was on our CT morning watch list. You heard Fausto go over this trade and it treated us pretty nicely. You know, we were calling out resistance going into the market open off 180. So really from 180 up to two, it was a nice day trade early on in the morning. But since it, it's been a bit of a dud, as you could see, it's just flattened out throughout the late morning heading into the afternoon. But... It's trying to make its way back up to two right now, right? So for right now, I'll come back to this. Keep this on the uh, side list, AYTU. My gripe on this trade is not that it's just teased us throughout the day. It's simply the fact that we have so much volume on the order book for this stock to cut through in order for it to make you know a decent move up. I'm talking about a 123,000 share order on the ask at 195. I'm talking about, you know, a 103,000 share order on the ask at 199. I'm talking about, of course, the 300 plus 85,000 share that you see on the ask at two. And that's not everything that you see it to. Right now, I see on Bookmap almost 600,000 shares currently posted there. So there's a lot more aside from what you guys just see on level three, even. You know, level four shows you even more. So for right now, AYTU, I'll keep this on the side as uh, hopeful as I am about this running, which I would love to see. We'll come back to this. I'd like to go through a couple of the other ones first on the morning watch list or from the uh, top percent gainers list, at least. UAVS, Cheapy, made a big pop earlier, popped right now, actually. Come back to this. FUV kind of spotty. We got to be picky, guys, heading into this afternoon. Uh, Jerry, Jerry called out the NETE trade at the time. It was a really good call out. Jerry, this was not late, by the way, man. I just want to let you know, you called this out right off the halt. You let us know when it was halted, at least. So, you know, I read it late. It popped up pretty nicely afterwards. It was a great call out and great trade. Uh, unfortunately, though, we know these types of stocks don't last all throughout the day and the volume crapped out pretty early. So, you know, this one's kind of fallen off course a bit, but, uh, you know, it was a great call at the time, Jerry. Look at this, ARCT. I haven't seen this one today called out, uh, at least as of now, it's approaching the high of the day. You know, it seems like it's ready for a breakout heading into the afternoon. Uh, is this all-time highs? That would be pretty interesting. I have no idea what the company does. Nope, not all time highs. So there's no historical, you know, resistance to work off of on this trade. Uh, if anything, a crazy gap on the daily chart back from October 14. Um, you know, it is breaking higher right now. The spread's pretty big though. The order book is fairly illiquid. So I'm not really too keen on that. But of course, you have to respect the trend and the fact that this stock is breaking a new high right now. So, you know, maybe more of a level five stock, but even that, the spread's pretty big. This one, Bed Bath and Beyond. Wow. I mean, of course, you know, with the help of the market pushing up very nicely all throughout the day, Bed Bath & Beyond has done pretty well. But, you know, it's done very well aside from that, you know, popped above resistance off of six later on going into the morning. And just a very steady trend, as you could see, all the way up to almost seven, 689 high of the day. Uh, for as much as this stock has fallen over the last you know month and a half with everything else, I mean, we're getting a nice recovery day between this and alongside that Macy's, which I guess we'll go to in a moment. Uh, Macy's probably not on the top of the gainer side, but 
Oh, it's not even in like the top 50 here. Jeez. All right. Well, we'll, we'll go to Macy's, a couple of the other department store stocks like Nordstrom's was up, Kohl's, David called out. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, again, very nice move from earlier on today. And at least for now, I'll put this on our list. Familiar name. A lot of us are familiar with Bed Bath & Beyond as a day trade, has a tight spread, a uh, very liquid order book as of today or as of so far. So uh, you know, given the run, it's probably more of a level two and probably heading into the last hour of the day, we'll get a little bit more volatile. So uh, hopefully this one ends up just breaking higher over 684 order on the ask. And if that, just on the way up to seven. All right. Eyes on the time, 242. I'm doing pretty good right now, actually, with that. So I just didn't want to uh, get too close to class time at 305 Eastern. Uh, VXRT, another stock that you know looked very nice from pre-market, a lot of activity at least, not the prettiest trend in the pre-market, but it was trading a lot of volume. So it's just a matter of hope, right? We're hoping for a breakout over the first resistance. And that was at 330. It was just a very strong level on the chart. We ended up seeing a very large order on the ask at the time. So you know it's easy to say, but once this broke above 330, it was off and running. If you missed it from 330 or even a little bit higher from there, it made it more difficult of a trade as it kept going up and up and up and up. When do you expect this stock to drop off or pull back? So, you know, we called this out throughout the morning. We called it out just before as it broke over four, but you saw the end result from there. It was a, it was a false breakout, you know, pop and drop from four. And ever since, it's just, just kind of traded in a tighter range. So VXRT for now will pass on. Already made a big move from today. Made a big move from like all of last week. So got to figure, uh, you know, if it's not breaking higher, there's only one other way it goes. All right, Hertz, familiar name and still trending up nicely. So much like Bed Bath & Beyond, although they're not in the same business, it's just looking at the trend, the activity across the day, the volume traded. It's a no-brainer, at least, to put this on our watch list for the close. And I'll tell you, another one that's making the list right now as we speak, guys, right back to it, AYTU. Ken, you knew I wouldn't miss this. Uh, AYTU, it's getting closer and closer to two. So I'm going to put this on the main watch list now in hopes of just a retest of the iceberg at two. And of course, from there, a hopeful breakout much higher into the close. But you know, as of now, popping a little bit more and more, getting closer to two. And for now, we don't have too many stocks on our watch list to not put this on. With the way the market's trending, though, we might end up putting a little bit more on it heading into the next few minutes. Uh, NAT from earlier, you know, big trade at least at the, at the market open, dropped off, but held pretty nicely from there, moved all the way up towards the eventual high of the day. And that was a really strong level, guys. Uh, for NAT, it's 725. I mean, there is at one point a 175,000 share order on the ask. And for every time it was getting tested, I thought it was going to break. A true case of if it's not breaking higher, right? So, you know, pulled back quite a bit. Uh, is held nicely though off the 680 level. And as of now, it is squeaking back up towards seven. So this stock I'm actually going to put on our list, not even in just hopes of a breakout higher, but if this one ends up crapping out the other way, and if this one really begins to pull back, break below support, it's shortable. So whereas I can say the same about VXRT, as far as you know how much it's moved up, I can't say that VXRT that we've been able to get the shares to short that one. So you know, as far as picking and choosing your battles, that's why I'd rather focus on NAT. It provides us opportunity both ways, depending on, of course, which level breaks. All right, quick water break there. I want to go to uh, Macy's, like I said, before we hop over to the losers list. M, doing really nicely from before. Looks like it's slowed down a little bit, but another one, it is uh, shortable for now, at least for those that have trade station. I would not be thinking about a short right now, but I say that in case if it ends up, you know, really pulling back a lot more, breaking under 550 and we see a lot of sell off, then you'd like to think, you know, perhaps the stock is going to look to push the other way. But again, for now, Macy's will add to our list pretty easily. Uh, I guess we'll check in with Kohl's and uh, Nordstrom. What's the symbol for Nordstrom again? I forgot. JWN, never mind, I remember it. <laughs> just for a second there, and just I tapped out. Nordstrom, though, is JWN. Uh, again, they're all at the highs right now, doing pretty nicely. Macy's is the cheapest one of those three. But you know, at the same time, if we're putting Macy's on our list, then I'm sure that you can keep just as good of an eye on these other two. 
All right, Kathleen calling out CLF at the high of the day. It is, it is. It is up 8% plus. It's a nice level one stock, Kathleen. So I'm sure there's a lot of stocks like this that are up big or approaching or breaking new highs. Um, I like CLF. But for right now, I want to go over to the losers list, see if there's anything from that side we could focus on. My answer to that is probably not as much because, you know, the markets are, of course, you know, trending up nicely throughout the day. And we haven't seen too many stocks that are down big that give us an opportunity to uh, short. So unless if there's a really good bottom fish out there, then I might just throw the CLF on our list, Kathleen. VSTM is a great short if you're able to get the shares for that. Uh, CLDX is short a bull. Don't get me wrong there. I mean, decent, you know, trend on the way down to 250. Nothing really too much to write home about there. Uh, I and O, if this was shortable, this would be number one. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, that's regardless. I would have brought this up right from the beginning of this meeting if this was shortable, because for as much as this has gone up the last, you know, week and a half or so, you had to have expected a pullback, guys. So it popped up over 16, but came right back down. And then from there, it's just been tanking. So I'm sure this will be on the way back up at some point. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at this rate if we end up seeing 10, even at some point over the next couple of days. But yeah, for right now, I and O, if this was shortable, it would have made the list and probably near the top, but not for now. All right. Uh, I tell you, that's pretty much it, though, guys. That's all I got, at least from the loser side. Nothing else that looks pretty familiar or anything that looks shortable. If there's anything else here in the chat board or across social media as well, I got my eyes on the chat board there, too. Let me know if there's anything else that you would want me to look at. Looking at Oxy from Ken. Nice trend up, it is. Absolutely. Right. So, you know, very similar to CL CLF, a lot of these, you know, oil, resource, energy stocks all pushing up pretty nicely, recovering at least. From Amy Cake Pop. Whoa, what the heck? Cheesecake Factory, right? So I remember Cheesecake Factory was one of the first companies uh, within the last month and a half that was saying that they weren't going to pay April rent. <laughs> so I, that's just how I remember the symbol cake. And that, that happened, like I said, at the very end of March or nearing the end of March, probably this big red candle day. I don't know if there's any news that came out, Amy, at the time, but very good call. Of course, breaking a new high now over a major resistance at 20 bucks. Also, you would assume 20 bucks to be a major resistance, major point of uh, resistance based on the volume that's there. Let's see. Now, you see a few green prints here, 20, and it adds up to be a bigger order uh, between 20 and 2005. In fact, 13K filled there as well. So, you know, if this pulls back, try and look for support roughly around 20. But very good call. We'll, we'll add cake to our main list. It's a big breaking new high now. Uh, similar, you could say to Oxy and CLF. I don't think those are up as much. So this one we'll, we'll put on the special list, at least for now. Look to see if this could break higher heading into the close. AYTU pulled back. But of course, that's still on our list for now. It's a major setup off of two. Uh, what else? I had AMRN, Amarin. That one uh, moved pretty nicely shortly after the open. It was a good short initially and then bounced back pretty nicely. It's flat though for the meantime. Tilray, TLRY, nice pop at the uh, market open as well. I missed a good chunk of this move. I didn't focus on Tilray right at 930, but I was fortunate to catch about 20 or 30 cents once it broke out further. Um, you know, pulled back pretty sharply. That's a nasty shake. I don't think there was any news, or I don't know if there was any news to be transparent on Tilray. Uh, great recovery, though, otherwise. So, you know, for right now, we'll, we'll keep this on our side list. Probably focus on this again come tomorrow morning. All right, guys. So I think that just about does it. Let me know if there's anything else here in the chat board. Total, we have two, four, six, eight stocks on the main list. Not too bad for me. Normally, you guys know I tend to stack the deck for you guys heading into the uh, afternoon. Kathleen did really well on CLF. She just posted in the chat board right now. Kathleen got out with a 23 cent profit. She got in from 396, I believe, right before the pop. Excellent, Kathleen. Very nice. So at least that entry ended up paying off. 
Um, if it held four and pulled back, I'd say not as good of a spot. But of course, as you knew, and as you saw, once it broke four, you were in a much, much better position of profit. And of course, the end result, you got out a really good price. So excellent trade, Kathleen. All right, guys, I'll tell you, we have a good list, though, for the afternoon, eight stocks in total. And of course, aside from that, you know, we're going to start with this list, but we're not going to keep it limited to just this list. You know, give it about 10 minutes, give it about 15 minutes, start with this list. But at that point, if there's nothing else that ends up moving well or to your liking, from there, we'll look to rescan the market, see if there's any other breakouts or breakdowns, anything else coming out, news or anything else otherwise. All right, guys, aside from that, keep in mind two things. Number one, for all of our students here, we're going to post and tweet the pics. We're going to post the link coming up for class in just a moment. Now, number two, for all of our uh, streamers watching across social media, Facebook and YouTube alike, if you would like to learn more about Cyber Trading University uh, and, and what we provide here as far as this online trade room, these meetings that we tend to host, and alongside that, the education um, that, that we have otherwise. Feel more than free to call the uh, number that's down below on the banner, and one of our education advisors will provide more information. All right, guys, aside from that, let's try to close out this day strong. Mar markets are pushing up nicely. I know that most of us will be trading with Fausto in class. But aside from that, hey, we did very well so far today. We don't want to lose those profits. So we're going to be picky. We're going to be choosy with what we get into. But it's not to say we're looking for a boring close. I think that we have a, a chance to close, it, close out this afternoon very nicely here. All right, guys. So I'll talk to you coming up very shortly. Take care.